Welcome back to another episode of the Moneyball Card Podcast. Today we're going to be taking a look at a prospect breakdown of Noel V. Marte, one of the top prospects in the game. Ton of hobby hype. Before that, like always, what did I pick up this last weekend? Really cool card. Hopefully you guys haven't seen this before, but this is a Burt Bylovin rookie card. Now, if you don't know who Burt Bylovin is, he's definitely a top 10 to 20 pitcher in baseball history. About 3,700 strikeouts, so has the 3,000 strikeout club. Really, really great. His rookie cards in a 1971 tops, which are super, super condition sensitive. Now, why do I say that? This is the card right here. Let it focus. Pretty good. I mean, obviously, there's some damage issues, but you might be thinking, why am I sharing this card? It's just a normal 71. Until you flip to the back, that is a blank back. Now, there's a few different theories on how blank back cards happen. Whether it is like a uncut sheet, whether it is kind of like a proof material type card, or it was an error inserted into a pack. Now, obviously, this has damage across it, so this was inserted into a pack at some point, but it is a blank pack, so a super, super scarce card. And I was able to pick this up for, I think, 30 or $35 of a Hall of Fame legend. That shows you that there are opportunities out there if you work hard at a card show. Don't always follow what other people are doing, but... That is a Burt by 11, 1971. Now we're going to be taking a look at the data of Noel V. Marte. So I'm going to be loading up two different tools. First, I'm using up market movers. And then I'm also going to be taking a look at fan graphs. So we have the breakdown on there of both the card prices and how the prospect is doing. See you on the computer. So before the breakdown, let's take a look at some of the card prices and the ones they get. So I'm going to go over here and search Noel V. Marte. And full transparency, I do have some of his base cards i have like one or two leaf autos as well don't have a ton of his material so i'm trying not to be any bias in this video just to tell you guys what i own so we have the base chrome prospect here raw price is about nine bucks i may go back to the psa 10 here to the grades that's what the market is based around right now and we're gonna go last 365 days so obviously there has been a decline. I've talked about it in a few other videos as well. Uh, modern baseball card market and prospects have decreased a little bit. Personally, I think it, they should be decreased a lot more based off of production levels of prospects compared to established stars in baseball. But I think that's going to take a bit more of a time. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Now we're looking at a peak of a sale at 139. There's a few others at 130 or so, but you can see the trend was 105 across the board there. Then it's been going down a little bit. We see one recently sold for 70 bucks, then some 80s, another one over here at 92. So let's call about $80. It's declined a little bit, but not as much as some of the other people have. Let's take a look at some of his autograph cards as well. So we have this Bowman Chrome autograph. We're going to look at PSA 10 on this one to see if it also has followed the trend of the base card. You can see this card has actually gone up. Now the data here starts in May. So we had one 10 at $600, another one at 306, another at 540. Whoever got that 306 got a steal. Congrats, sir, on that one. But you can see now it's at $1,100. So it has gone up. I want to take a look at one more sample as well. Don't know if he has a sapphire or not. I believe he does. So let me see. No, it does not. But let's take a look at like a refractor. So we're going to look for a normal refractor. Here we go. And we're going to look at a PSE 10. There is that data available. And let's look at it. So last 365, there hasn't been too many sales. You can see that when it started tracking, 250, 300, another sale, 245 and 415. Let's look at a nine grade as well. So it looks like some of his rare stuff is going up, but the base is going down, which makes sense. I'm going to take these out. I'll just put everything over. We'll see. The 9.5 as well. See if there's anything with these. Now, nah, there hasn't been much on that side of things. So, not enough sample size. It's a pop 16. So, I wouldn't worry about that too much. But you can see some of his other cards are going up while the base is going down across the board. So, there's a lot of hype around Marte. Now, he plays for the Seattle Mariners. Why I like the Mariners is they have a really, really young core on that team. They have a pitcher named George Kirby who's going to be called up. Uh, I think this year or next year, and he's kind of like a Greg Maddox type pitcher with his location. Absolutely great. I can't wait to cover him another episode. I do have some of his cards, 
Now you have Julio Rodriguez, who people debate whether he should be number one, two, or three prospect in baseball. And also you have Noelve Marte. I'm sure there's a few other prospects as well that could pan out. We don't know how that works out sometimes. For example, like Juan Soto wasn't the top Nationals prospect, and he did absolutely amazing in the major leagues. And I mean, he's one of the top three, top five players in baseball right now. So it is somewhat of a gamble when you look at prospects. So keep that in mind. But here is Noel V. Marte. So you can see his hitting profile. They have him at 30-45. Game power at 35-60. Raw power 55-70. So he is a power hitter, which our hobby absolutely loves. Speed-wise, 60-55. Fielding, 40-50. So they expect his speed to go down a little bit, maybe bulking up. You can see over here, he's six foot one, 181 pounds. He is at the young age of 20. So let's take a look at some of his numbers over here. Got called up the rookie ball at age 17. Played some A and A plus note 2020 season, obviously. And let's take a look at the underlying stats. So we'll take a look at rookie ball first. 65 games. He had nine home runs. Again, age 17, that's really, really good because you don't develop a lot. Now, base on ball percentage is about 10%, which is okay. Strikeouts is 18.4%. I don't like that. ISO 202, which is a little bit lower. You can see a batting average there is a 309 WRC plus 138. So I do like that overall at the age of 17. Great job. Now we're going to take a look at the two 2021s. So uh, mostly we're going to look at A because there's only been eight games in single A plus. So in 100 games, he had 17 home runs, which if you look at it, about another third of the season on there, maybe 26 home runs at the age of 19. Now his walk rate went up, which is fantastic at 12.1%. However, his strikeout rate did go up as well, and I am a little bit concerned of that. Obviously, we're going towards an outcome of a game where a lot of people is home run or strikeout, but you know, I don't like seeing a high K percentage when looking at players to purchase. Now, ISO did decrease a little bit, which is unfortunate, but so did the average down to 271, WRC plus of 119. So overall, what the data is showing is that he's hitting home runs. Obviously, he did extremely well in 19 at 17, did well as well in 2021, but the strikeouts are up there a little bit. I mean, you're creeping over 20%, but the walks is a good thing. I mean, he's at 10 and 12%. Maybe he can continue to develop his eye a little bit. One thing I always talk about in this series is competition gets a lot harder in double AA, A, triple A, and in the major leagues. I and mean, we're talking about other levels of the minor league system and officially majors. So, as pitchers get better, as a player, you should develop as well. Now, he's only 20 years old, so he has a lot of time still before he gets called up to the major leagues. He's still going to probably spend a year or two in the minors, but just keep that in mind. Now, we're going to take a look at some of his other stats as well, so the batted uh, percentages. And one thing I don't like is this pull percentage. So we're looking at a 52.3% pull percentage, 24% center field, 23% opposite, and it was even worse in rookie ball at 56, 20, and 23. Now, lucky for Marte, Major League Baseball is banning the shift, which is going to benefit some people, but I don't know to the full extent as the time of recording this. is only March 8th, but assuming that the infield can't shift, but the outfield still does, this isn't a great thing uh, that you're still pulling the ball that much, but um, with the shift being canceled, who knows? Too, way, way too early to tell, but I don't like seeing that the pull percentage is that high it needs to be more spread out between center field and opposite field pitchers can still throw around that as they get better now let's take a look at some fielding as well so we're going to look over here and he had 30 errors in 63 games in rookie ball that is not good at all you can see single a as well uh better fielding but still had 29 errors obviously you don't have all the advanced stats here in fan graphs but Defense isn't good, so don't like that. So what's my breakdown on Marte right now? He's still very, very young of a player, so I wouldn't project him getting called up at all this year. They say ETA is a 2023, so kind of expect that there. He has a ton of power. I mean, you can see the raw power 55 and 70, so if that can develop, that's a really good thing, but I am a little bit scared of the, the strikeout percentage and the pull as well as some errors. So there are a little bit, some red flags, but Marte, if he ends up bulking up and can fix that, that's good. Again, average is 
pretty good so far in the minor leagues at 309 and then 271. So those are decent numbers. It's not like he's batting 250, but the competition will get better. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and you'll see another prospect video next week.